All right, Tony Gun. What it do, Cap? Man, just out here. The sun, the sunlight. The sunlight, you know. Straight in the hood, y'all already know. We got Cam in a big four zero. Home team, the big love. Showing love. What's up, Cam? What we doing? But you, you was working on something. Yeah, I was just working on a video right now called Tony Gun. It's one of my new singles. It ain't even out yet. It's coming along. So you know you just got done filming a music video. Yeah, sir. And, and knocking that out, you got a lot of music coming. Well, what was it like for you growing up out here? Shit, it was really like my mom and dad died when I was like 12, 13. You feel me? So I moved right down the street on this corner, 48th and St. Andrews. I moved right there. But I really ran away. I went to go live with my brothers. I ran away. So growing up around here was just like shit. Every other ghetto, you feel me? They had no parents, no guidance. The streets kind of like adopted me. My older homies, my younger homies. Shit. I just came up like that. How about what age did you start meeting your homies and jumping into the streets? It was really location. Like my, my home school had a lot to do with it. You feel me? It was like neighborhoods at my home school. So it was like, then I moved right here. You know, a little donut, my boy, a little nut, free little nut. I moved with him for a minute, so all I knew really was the photos right here. Your parents passed away, you moving with your friends. Well, how do you think like all that affected you going through that? With your Same. parents passing away that at that young of an age? It really affected me because I had to make all the decisions, you feel me? Like growing up, I really didn't have no pops. So I just really had my mom, but I knew of my pops. So I really just had my mom. So that was like the only guidance I had. Really. Even though my whole block was like my family, like I lived on Gramercy with like my sister next door, my granny on this side. I had a brother down the street. I had my, my mom's sister straight across the street. You feel me? Like eight of my eight of the houses on the block was my direct family. So once she was gone, it was more like I don't got no guidance. You feel me? I don't got to listen. So that's how I got really caught up in the street by being rebellious. So that made you gravitate towards the streets more, you think? It really just put me as a kid like in a um, in a hard spot because I had to go live with, from home to home. You feel me? So wherever I fell in, it was like my environment. So once I fell in right here, it was like that's all I knew was so baby right here. And uh and what's high school did you go to? I went to Crenshaw High. I went I got kicked out of Crenshaw like two probably like two thousand. I went to Birmingham. I came back to Crenshaw. I went to Hamilton for like one day. As soon as we jumped in, there was a little melee. I mean, as soon as we checked in, I had a little melee at Hamilton. Checked out the same day. So I went to like three, four high schools. You ever graduating? Uh, nah. Funny story is I graduated in prison. <laughs> I graduated, I got my GD in prison. Just kept it rolling. I never graduated uh, on the street though. So growing up, South Central, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it sounds like you had a rough childhood. Uh, you mentioned you went to jail and you actually got your GED or GED in jail. Yeah. Uh, what all did you get locked up for? Shit. 459, robbers. Okay. Trying to get some money, really. How long were you locked up for? The first time I did two and a half, the second time I did four. And I just got out. I've been out three years. I just did like I did nine, eight and a half. All for robberies? Yeah, well, burglary and robberies. Okay. What was it like doing all that? Shit, uh, it was basically like, um, without having like no mom or no guidance to really be like, you gotta get a job to make it out here in the streets. Me figuring out on myself, I'm like, I gotta have some money. You feel me? The only thing that's gonna help me is some money. So once I got into crime, I just kept doing it. I just kept being caught at it, being caught for it. So I'm like, I ain't good at it, so I retired. Now I'm a rapper, you feel me? I'm like, I'm cool on that shit. Every house I break in or rob, I get caught somehow. You feel me? So I'm, I'm good. What do you think was like your biggest come up? Money wise? Yeah. I don't even know to keep it just off the rip. Because back then, we was just going, going, you feel me? Split it up, going, split it up. So I know I had some money. 10, 20, 30 at a time? Yeah, 50? like 20s, 30s. I ain't really, I ain't really um, seen probably over 50 at one time. Okay. Not from no um, lick, I'll say that. 
Is there any funny stories from doing that that you can talk Shit. about? A real funny story is how I got caught. I went flocking, rubbing my eyes. All the time we in a big ass house. I swear I go to the top room, to the uh, master bedroom. I'm flocking it. It's big, the AC loud. And I just remember just getting what I was getting, I'm putting it by the door. And then getting what I was getting, I was loading everything by the door. So when I leave, I just leave. And I remember putting something by the door. It was a um, sparkling bottle full of like quarters and shit. I just put it by the door. But when I looked, I just seen a badge. I'm like, damn, like, not to see Johnny in here, the police. I looked again and the police coming down. Like, straight down the hallway, straight, like, we know you in here. I just locked him out, sat on the bed. It was funny because I tried to run, run to the bathroom. I was looking down like I could jump out the bathroom window. It was two story. There was police right there. They're like, oh, you're right here. Which is a funny story. I got caught. I'm like, fuck it. They was beating at the door. They finally kicked it down. Brushed me up a little bit. But I'm like, the whole time I heard the noise, I thought it was my boys flocking. I'm like, it happened that quick. It was already gone? It was already gone. I was the only one who got caught. They didn't even warn you? It was too big of them. They said they did, but I, I can kind of understand how I couldn't hear it. The, the house is kind of big, you feel me? Yeah. So I'm like, okay. In the loud ass uh, air conditioner. I'm up on the loud as hell. And I'm rolling my friends. So I couldn't hear them. Damn. Yeah. Okay. That's the time you got, and that was the, you got nine years for that? I got two half of that. Okay. Yeah. That's my first time ever getting caught for something like this. I like a little funny story. Okay. Love. You got a little. 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 Yeah, that speaks value to like the hood, you feel me? This is all generations in this one yard right here. From my OGs to our youngest lopes, our infant lopes in this one yard. So that like speaks a lot of value to like where I come from, cause we still around, still programming, you feel me? Still together, unified. Okay, so you guys kind of came together now? Everybody? Well, shit, we've been together. I'm saying as far as the folks. The folks, the folks, the the folks, that's just one. They're gonna be at the same place as we're gonna be at. They're gonna be the opposition is the same opposition as ours. So we all came together basically. We won her. Okay. Is this just like a normal day? Just everybody hanging out? Yeah, this this one even playing right here. People that was over there, okay, they was there to participate, you feel me, they was there. People who was already right here was already just right here. So this is basically like how the hood is, just programming. Okay, and how often do you guys get together? Is this an everyday thing? Just whenever, you know, you got a little downtime. I can't speak for everybody, but you know, I come show my face when I got some downtime, I ain't doing too much, come see my good people. I'm pretty sure that's how they program too, you feel me? Yeah, you stay busy? Yeah, How you got going on besides just Shit, music? I, I started, uh, I picked up the camera, fuck with my boy Judy. So I do films, I got some um, videos out on Real uh, Rescue TV. Y'all can go look that up on Instagram and on uh, YouTube. Real Rescue TV. I shoot unshot videos, did interviews. I mean, I do music. I got merch right here. This this is my merch right here, Risk Tank. So, I do a lot of shit. That. How old were you when you got in the hood? So I was about like 16, 17. Okay. Yeah. You're a pretty big dude. <laughs> How many dudes did it take to jump you in? Uh, two. That's it? Yeah, man. It was like, it's different. You feel me? Everybody's situation different in this shit. Okay. Like, if you was known already, or if you know you knew somebody who was tied in, you ain't gonna have that many things. That's just how it is. If you some stranger trying to come get put on this shit, you feel me? It's gonna be, you gonna get ran. Get a little tougher. So you grew up in, you had, you had family from the hood? I got family. My uh, cousin, little Pee Wee. My uh, other cousin, H Murder. This really my, my family right here. All, everybody right here, really, to keep it 100. These are the people when my mom and dad died, I told you, at 12, 13. 
these the people I was around. These the people, this is all I knew. Really, I was closer to my hood than my real actual family. And then me just getting out, 35, I did nine years. It made me a little closer to my family because I was a little older. You feel me? It made me okay. But growing up, I had a total disconnect from my family. My family was from the other side too. So I'm like, I'm from right here and they from over there. Like, they still my family, but it's like, off on the other side. But that's a young nigga thinking like bullshit. Now I'm older, so I understand that I was missing out on. What's it like when you run into your family? That's all I love. That even though that you guys are from rival hoods? Yeah. It don't even get brought up. It's just family. But me growing up, I didn't know that. You feel me? I just like, maybe y'all so mean because y'all ops. Y'all done found out I got put on this, so y'all a little more meaner to me. I'm looking at it in game bag away, but I, I was doing all the wrong shit. So it had good um, good intentions. You feel me? They wanted me to do right. I love my family. Your family tried to keep you out of the streets? Yeah, even though they was in the streets, it just seemed better for me, I guess. You feel me? They really wanted me to play sports. So like, when that didn't really happen, they got a little tougher. You mentioned going to prison nine years. Yeah. Man, that's a long stretch, man, to do it one time. Hell yeah, it is. Yeah. What, what was it like for you? It was hard. It was, it was hard. It was hard in one aspect. And that's like losing. I lost my big brother. I lost my sister, granny. So I lost a lot of people in there. But it was easy because I already been through it. You feel me? I already had been in prison prior to that time. So the whole prison part was easy, but losing my family and shit like that, I always been, you know, I got to ask for shit all day. You feel me? Let me get this, let me get this. I'm like a bill. So I was like, I'm independent. I want to do for me. I don't want to have to ask nobody. I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to be a bill to nobody. So that's your life. That's the hardest part about it right there, losing your family and then having to be a bill. What do you think was like one of the most wildest things you've seen when you were in prison? Wildest thing? I've seen all type of shit. I've seen people get airlifted off the yard, get stabbed up. The helicopter got to come get them. I was at Folsom. Uh, shit. I seen somebody mark out and go to a whole different prison under a whole different name and be programming. Crazy shit. I don't see some crazy shit up in that motherfucker. Which yard do you think was the toughest? Uh, the higher yards, level fours, level three is going to be always tougher because it's more structured. The more you get to level twos and level ones, it's still young. Still young kids coming to jail for some two and a half shit or some 32 or 80 ass case. So it'd be a bunch of babies, you feel me? So the higher levels will always be more structured. Okay. And. and when you got out of jail, did you get a regular job or anything, or did you try to go, go straight? I went straight into music, but yes, I got a job because I'm going to need the money to fund it. So uh, me and my baby mom, we were working at a warehouse, working at a warehouse together, packing boxes, putting them on the trailer. So yeah, I had a regular job for about four months. Okay. Well, that's what's up. So Lupe, man, uh, yeah. Lupe, 46, 3, has been making a big name for herself, doing a lot of right. big things, man. Shout out Lupe. How, how you feel about all that? I feel like uh, she got what she deserved. You, feel me? You, get, you, you get back the time you put in. So she put in the time, she put in the work, and now she's just reaping her benefits. Because it didn't come overnight, so... It's just a true testament that if you just stay at it, you don't quit, you're going to make it someday. I hear that. One of the questions I asked over there was like, what is the good food spots around here? For sure, Fat Daddy's. 48th okay. Second Ave, Fat Daddy's, that's good. Uh, King Tacos I right here might take, might take two hours to get them, but they good. You feel me? Right here, um, Fat Burger, you know, you go to Fat Burger, rest in peace, don't live in there. Always go there. Delicious right here on Crenshaw and Vernon if you want that little soul. And, you know, soul food, you go right there, delicious. What makes you stay coming back to your hood? Because I'm pretty sure you're older, you've been to prison, 
you could probably move away and be a lot safer. Yeah. But you choose to stay in your hood. Because you, um, to me, it's like. This is what you signed up for and you don't quit. You feel me? You don't turn your back on what you signed up for. So, like, I signed up to rap. I make music now. That's like me quitting. You feel me? So, me to not come to the hood, that's like, that's like me quitting on the hood. Like, quitting for some shit I took want to do. I feel like I can't really uh, turn my back on the hood. If I signed up for it, I'm going to finish it out. I'm going to see it through. These will be the people coming to my funeral. So, that's why I come to the hood. Sir. I want to give a shout out though, Chris Tagus, you feel me, franchise everything, OC Tagus, the whole club, my boy Jetty Remix, my boy Baby Smooth, shout out to D, my nigga Lil Blue, Baby Smooth, franchise T8, AD, the whole gang, the Gutter Soul, Day Day, Lupe, everybody from the hood, you feel me, shout out to Homeless. Shout out Cam Capone for even coming to the hood cause he's in the hood. Like, he didn't send nobody to come over here. He's in the hood. You feel me? Amongst the uh, hooligans. Oh, good. The hooligan Lex. Right over there somewhere. That's what's up. Appreciate you, yeah. Tony Gunn. Man, we appreciate you, man. Live from the glove.